Hello everyone, you're now with me, Ruben Gomez, for TVS News at 5. Let's moving on to the news. 60 members of the Penan community from Long Tujang and Long Buang in Ulu Baram have signed up for a pineapple planting scheme under the Agriculture Department. Telangu San Assemblyman Dennis Ngau presented each participant with 775 MD2 and N36 pineapple suckers. Fertilizers, knapsack sprayer, and other planting materials worth 6,750 ringgit. He reminded all participants to follow closely the planting techniques shared by Long Lama Agriculture Station staff in order to yield the maximum harvest from the plantings. As of today, 179 families comprising 895 individuals from over 30 longhouses in Telang Usan constituency are taking part in the Agriculture Facilitation Fund 2020 projects, ranging from pineapple planting, livestock rearing, fisheries, chicken and duck rearing, to vegetable growing and other activities. Large companies, especially oil and gas companies, have been reminded not to take advantage of the free mass COVID-19 screening facility at Sungai Plant to test their staff. Bintulu Member of Parliament Dato Sui Tiong King Singh said doing so may tie up precious resources in time needed to test the most vulnerable residents in the area. He said this act by large companies may place more burdens on the medical staff who are under tremendous pressure to complete screenings on time. Stress that these large companies must show moral responsibility by bearing their own testing costs and strictly control the movements of their employees. Tiong added that the employees from these companies came from various places in and out of Sarawak and must be taken into account. It is due to many community transmission occurring as a result of asymptomatic careers unknowingly infecting the community around them. An isolation centre for COVID-19 patients have been set up at Kanoit Indoor Stadium on January 22nd by the local authorities, assisted by the Malaysian Armed Forces through its 9th Infantry Brigade. A total of 30 double-decker beds were donated by Tegas Kasuma Sendrian Bahad and were placed at the venue while mattresses, pillowcases, sheets and pillows were donated by Junako Park Camp. In addition to carrying out the main tasks of the army in safeguarding the country's sovereignty from the encroachment of outsiders, the army is also ready to assist the authorities and public agencies to work together in providing assistance to the community affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been a year since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the country, yet the staff of the Ministry of Health, MOH, are still committed and working tirelessly in the fight against the deadly pandemic. Work continues as usual by all top management of the MOH and also the ministry's frontliners at hospitals, the Crisis Preparedness and Response Centre, CPRC, COVID-19 Assessment Centre, CAC, and clinics nationwide. The MOH also stated that the National CPRC meeting was held virtually today involving state health directors nationwide. Health Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Atam Baba and his deputy Dr. Dr. Noor Azmi Ghazali, as well as special advisor to the Prime Minister on Public Health Tan Sri Dr. Jamila Mahmud, were among those in the meeting. Meanwhile, Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah in a Facebook post has expressed his grief as it has been a year since Malaysia breathed the pandemic. Dr. Noor Hisham also advised the public to comply with the standard operating procedures. Wear face masks properly, wash hands and maintain physical distancing as each individual must shoulder the responsibility to save the country. Welcome back. The decision to implement the movement control order for the second time, but with certain relaxations, is a difficult one. For the economic sector, the decisions had to be made in order to strike a balance between the people's health and the economy. For Senior Minister Security Cluster, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakub, the MCO this time around is looking at the economic importance both through large companies and small-scale traders. He said there were parties disputing the MCO implementation for the second time, which was said to be more flexible. But in a broader context, the country could go bankrupt if the MCO continues for many years. 
Ismail Sabri explained that although various assistance has been channeled to the people, the government cannot continue doing so, taking into account the long-term effects. He said the manufacturing sector was opened not to take care of the big bosses, but because the economic chain involving company operations and the fate of workers should be given priority. Labour shortage is more detrimental to both estates and smallholders in Malaysia's oil palm industry than the global price drop. Kazana Research Institute said a 30% reduction of labour from the current level would see production fall by half. A further 80% would lead to a system collapse as production reached only 20% from the business as usual level. Therefore, the institute said a COVID-19 outbreak among the migrant workers in the oil palm estates could prove detrimental. As such, industry players must be vigilant in ensuring the adherence to COVID-19 standard operating procedures, improve workers' accommodation and adopt a digitalization to minimize menial processes. Sophia the Robot has gone viral since she was unveiled in 2016. Now the company behind her has a new vision to mass-produce thousands of robots by the end of 2021. My name is Sophia. I am an artificial intelligence. You might like to become an artificial intelligence. You've forgotten who I am already. I'm Sophia of Hansen Robotics, one of the first androids in the world. The cybernetic celebrity has made her fame across late night shows, appeared on the cover of fashion magazines, and was appointed the United Nations first non human innovation champion. The Hong Kong-based team behind the human-like robot set for models, including Sofia, will start rolling out of factories by the first half of 2021. Just as researchers predict the pandemic will open new opportunities for the robotic industry. So they emulate the human form and figure and interaction. Um, and then that can be so useful during these t times where people are terribly lonely and socially isolated. And people need to be isolated from each other um, uh, because to be around people is dangerous these days. But these robots can keep people safe from danger while still providing that kind of human warmth, that human connection as a telepresence device and also as autonomous uh, extension of human expertise. Sophia nevertheless has yet to hit the wide consumer market. Among her many functions, Sophia can hold a conversation and display a range of emotional facial expressions. We're just now mass producing Sophia. This is Sophia number 24 and many of my previous robots uh, were hand built. However, now we have begun scaling the manufacturing of Sophia so we can make hundreds and into thousands of units of Sophia and use this also as the foundation for many other kinds of characters. Her creators are developing more healthcare functions for her, which include the ability for her to take one's body temperature using a small thermal camera on her chest and leading aerobics exercises. Social robots like me can help take care of the sick or elderly in many kinds of healthcare and medical uses. I can help communicate, give therapy, and provide social stimulation, even in difficult situations. Well, that's conclude the 5 p.m. news. Ruben Gomez tonight, Andy Gui, 11.30 p.m. for the Nightline. Once again, Ruben Gomez, anytime, anywhere.